Whoops. <laughs> Good morning. It's magic time. Sharon Danley here with another Two Minute Tips Live. Uh, and I, right off the bat, I've been having a few more problems with technical stuff, but you know, I will persevere and we'll just keep moving forward. So today's discussion is going to be about self-tanners uh, and um, whether it's yay or nay. And the next thing that we're going to talk about uh, is even skin tone. Uh, you know, how do we get it? What products do we use? What's the best way? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And of course, uh, followed with um, oh, there we go. Q and A. <laughs> okay, so let's get right into the self tanners and let's hope everything's in place. Ah, oh, so far it is. Okay, so self tanners and tanning in general. Skin is not my forte, so let me put that right out at front. But I do have experience in the field, and my skin for my age kind of speaks for the fact that I know a little bit about the subject. So, sun. Ah, glorious sun at the beach. Maybe a martini, maybe not. Uh, all kinds of wonderful things. We love the sun. It speaks to us. However, given the the situation with the problems with the sun and becoming more educated with being in the sun too long, what it can do for us, we've opted to go for self-tanners. Now, why do we do this? Because we've been told that it helps to camouflage our cellulite on our legs and gives a sun-kissed look to the skin. Yeah, right. Mythbusters. It does not camouflage, and it often leaves an orange undertone to the skin. Um, a tanned skin used to be coveted, uh, showing that you had uh, a leisurely life. It was once a social status, as it was associated with, um, you know, a healthy glow. Yet, at other times, tan skin was looked upon as being poor and having to work long hours in the sun. Our sisters in other cultures would never dream of putting their skin in the sun as it suggests lower social status. Now, our, uh, you know, sported the parasol uh, came into great uh, use during the Victorian era, sported by our Victorian sisters. And our Oriental sisters were more than just a fashion statement with them as they actually protected the face from the sun Again, tan skin was seen in the negative. So, from a psychological perspective, both sides of the fence have coveted this for reasons given. Now, there is lots to explore in Ms. Google about tanning accelerators. That's the latest aid in the pursuit of a tan skin. But a time-efficient word of caution, avoid them, as the FDA considers them unapproved drugs, and some consider them dangerous. And stay away from tanning salons. The UVA rays you would get are not, as advertised, safer than the sun's UVB rays. They're just as likely to cause sunburn, skin cancer, and premature aging of the skin. Studies have shown also in spray tan salons uh, that looked at whether the DHA, when inhaled, could increase one's risk for asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or cancer. So again, I'd say simply stay away from them. Now, you know, even when I was working at CBC, uh, uh, we used airbrushing equipment. And I wasn't a fan of it because not enough research had been done on the minuscule particles inhaled. Now, here's a, a picture of my pal uh, and comedian Alan Park getting him ready to do his uh, his Obama thing. And, um, you know, this is a way to, to change skin color from very light shade to a much darker shade with uh, an airbrush machine and makeup. And here's Alan as Obama. And here he is uh, with me uh, when I finally went gray. 
So, um, you know, in this, and, and a little story about what happened at CBC, they had to paint the, the makeup rooms one day, you know, just general uh, cleanup and that sort of thing. And when they pulled the monitors away from the wall to, to, to paint the walls, they discovered that the back of the monitors were all pink. Guess what that was from? The airbrushing that had been going on the tiny minuscule particles that fly up so you see i'm not a i'm just not a big fan of of air air brushing um and when you have to hold something over your face so you don't inhale it uh i don't know i just i just i don't go there um you know so so and for those who think that the sun itself uh is isn't harmful or simply don't pay attention to it um there is melanoma issues they have found in studies, that the left side of people's faces are far more susceptible to everything from wrinkles to melanomas due to driving. And truck drivers and others that drive a lot have a serious issue to contend with. But like one doctor states, they're just always full of excuses. Now, I did an interesting uh, uh, little... Um, whatchamacallit, a, uh, a study I found, that in, uh, in, where is it, the Middle East and North Africa, now these are countries where bodies are mostly covered. They have the lowest rates of skin, skin, skin cancer. Whereas in North America uh, and Russia and Australia, they have where we wear far less clothing, we have the highest rates of cancer. So that's another thing to consider now. The other thing we need to look at is the beauty industry in all of this discussion. They are all over this, of course, because of the sales of bronzers and other related products. There is simply no need for bronzers, in my opinion as they are kind of phony looking, and they add an extra and unnecessary step to your makeup routine, and your hard-earned dollars could be spent elsewhere. Now, the thing that we also need to discuss as we age, sunspots for us older dolls and those coming behind us is rarely talked about except to sell a lotion or a potion to get rid of them. Hmm. Yet, the same industry that engineered our thinking into believing darker skin was something to behold uh, has self-tanners with all kinds of promises just waiting for you to pick them up. You know the drill. And these age spots accelerate as we age. Think about Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin. Cronin. Look at Jessica Tandy in Driving Miss Daisy, and you can see other pictures of her when she was younger. No age spots, but boy, she really had a lot as she aged. Um, so the bottom line, really, is to just stay out of the sun. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do you any good. It, 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 uh, as we age, they will come out. So you know, some people said, I have great skin. You know what I have? I just don't have the same pigmentation, but I do have some, as you will see in the next segment. I've stayed out of the sun. Uh, you know, I, uh, I can remember once looking for a hat because I, I had this little retreat up north where, you know, we're outside a lot. And I was looking for a hat to help cover because back in the 80s, I was really, you know, I was really becoming aware of this. So I bought this big, 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 big hat. And if you stretch your arms right out, right out, you'll for me anyway, the hat brim covered from one end of my longest finger to the other. That's how big that hat was. So I, so I said to the, to the gentleman that sold me, oh my God, what am I, what am I going to wear with it? And of course he said, darling, all you need are sunglasses and a smile. So of course I bought the hat, but I was young. <laughs> anyway, what I do do, and I've been doing this for years, is I wear an umbrella when I go out, or I have a, I have actually a lace parasol and a fan, but I do, I have that. I, I wear my umbrellas to protect from the sun. The other thing I do is I wear a hat 
often when I'm outside. Uh, and if my hair is up or I'm not as protected as I need to, anyway, I wear sunblock on my hands, my forearms, my feet if I'm wearing sandals, and my legs. So, you know, it just to protect myself. So, what's the bottom line in all of this? As I happen to be a woman of pallor, simply by accident of birth, I also simply embrace my whiteness fully. I've always maintained whatever skin color you were blessed with at birth, embrace it and make the most of it. There are beautiful people in all colors of the human spectrum. So why try to be something we aren't? Number two, tanners and bronzers are another time consuming expensive beauty regime that we can ditch just like we did with the dye for gray hair. In fact, younger women are not opting for a tan skin. They prefer to avoid the fake look and are all for saving their skin, clothes, expense, and precious time. In other words, ladies, it's become passe. And number three, uh, wear a self-tanner or the real thing. There is just too many questions about the safety of either. And it's definitive. They unequivocally cause age spots. Now, like I said, I'm not a skincare expert and I'm not into the science of UVB, UVA, retinol, AHA, apple cider vinegar, and all the other acronyms and products surrounding the issue. My focus is on the other aspects of beauty. But in the practice of KISS, this is what I practice. Umbrellas, hats, and gloves, and protective body wear, etc., if I, I, uh, I use Neutrogena 45 or, or uh, larger, larger, long, bigger, more, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. I like the Neutrogena because it doesn't feel oily or anything like that on my skin. And I use it when I'm going out in the sun. And I also cover, like I said, my, if my hair is up, I make sure my ears are covered, the back of my neck. Uh, golfers, take a look at their necks. Every single one of them, men and women, they've got redneck. It's uh, it's it, and it's because they're not protecting uh, with hats or sunblock. Um, and I, as I said, I wear sunblock when I'm uh, even wearing sandals because if the sun can see it and touch it, then it needs protection. And I walk on the shady side of the street, au contraire to the popular song, because I just do. It's a habit I've worn for a long, long time. And I, uh, I've been doing this for over 30 years uh, with a simple yet good skincare regime. And my skin for 72, uh, I think, is, you know, pretty fair. So now I'm going to open it up to questions. Whoops, I meant to go here. So I'm going to, hopefully this will work because we've been having some problems with comments. Ah, Beautiful. We have them. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ingrid, Madeline, Joan, uh, Diane, uh, Joan Southern, sister in, okay, I'm going to uh, put this up here, uh, Joan. Ah, okay. Joan says that uh, a sister in law melanoma left arm driving with window dine down tiny it was removed yes absolutely joan absolutely thank you for sharing that yeah arm out of the window you know we just don't pay much attention hi g Kels. and uh, joan i avoid sun let's put you up here i avoid sun take precautions also in the sun states cataracts are very frequent so wear sunglasses. Excellent point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, let's see. Um, Sue. Hi, Sue Silva. Uh, Jan Pose. I'm late as usual. Doesn't matter. Uh, what about people saying sunscreen blocks? Uh, let me put you up here. Uh, 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 what people saying sunscreen blocks vitamin D? Ah, well... Here's something, that's, that, and that's a good question, thank you. Um, get, try, try getting sun on the back of your legs. 
you know, sit out for, for a little bit, but turn over and have the sun on the back of your legs because your legs, the back of your legs isn't exposed to the sun very much. But your face, your decollete, your hands and ar forearms, and of course anything that isn't covered would be. I also take a vitamin D supplement. Now, you know, I'm no doctor, I'm no scientist, uh, and I'm not a skincare expert. I'm just sharing what works for me. And I think, you know, I had a heart attack uh, 12 years ago, but I'm still, you know, moving and grooving. Uh, I, I take good care of my life and, and, I, and I have a regime of, or a regimen of vitamins and, and things that I take every single day and nighttime too that help me. So, you know, I take extra vitamin D and like uh, uh, many doctors have said, it's like chicken soup. It can't wait. Okay, uh, uh, Kathy, where, lo love my hair and pin curls. Ah, thank you, Kathy. Um, uh, actually, it's, and I'm going to show you, it's, I have, uh, where, where did, did you, some of you saw me yesterday on, on live that I was trying to show, I was going to do a, a live video of, of, you know, an announcement saying about today. Well, I did not look my best. My hair, uh, this time, when I shampooed it, if I want the curl, I just blow it dry with a diffuser. Well, um, what I did this, I was just a mess and I stayed up late, uh, just a lot of technical stuff. My brain was in digital hell. Anyway, uh, a good night's sleep always helps everything, doesn't it? So this morning, what I did was I spritzed my hair because I've got the curl keeper in it, original. And then I put in my um, temple to temple uh, one weft hair extension. And here's one that I had in. I took out because I thought maybe it was just a little too too thick. So, you know, pin curls, water, the right product. It's, it's, it's easy. But thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Joan Southerd, um, I take vitamin D. Uh, uh, from the sun is absorbed through the eyes. Well, thank you, Joan. I didn't know that. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I, okay. Uh, she, I suffer from a psoriasis and need the sun to help my skin heal. I can understand that. And again, it's the question of where you take the sun in, right? So if you can, if you can take it in where it's, it's, you're not, uh, uh, parts of your body are being exposed all the time to it, that's, um, I think, a little bit better way to go. Um, and our friend here uh, says that, uh, well, I can't see, just a second. <laughs> uh, Jan says, I set up for 15 minutes for D, but sunscreen on my face, chest, hands, back of legs, great idea. Great. Excellent. So yes, you sit out, but you protect yourself. Excellent. Okay, uh, I think that um, D3 is the best to take, Kathy Verner says. Well, that's, that's interesting. We're going to have to look into that. Um, okay, and here we have, let me just shrink this down a little bit. Um, uh, I've worked in a pool in high school or college, so I've already done the damage. I take precautions now, but what do I do now uh, to undo some of the damage? Well... I wish I could help you with that. I, I, I really don't know, and that's something that I think your dermatologist or doctor is, is who you'd want to speak to. But I can talk to you about how to help cover it up uh, or help to camouflage it with makeup. And makeup with SPF in it also helps to give just a little bit of protection. Um, let me see. So I think that's about all we have. Uh, oh, let me see. Um, Diane, let's see what she says. Diane Villeneuve, I have a lot of redness in my skin, so it's hard for me to match foundation color. I'm also fair. Um, should I go to the lighter side of the shade? Also have sunspots on both cheeks. Ah, well, uh, that's a good question, and I'm going to address that a little bit in our, uh, in our next segment here um, uh, to, to show... Um, you know, how we can do that and talk about where, how we camouflage and how we pick our colors. Okay, so I think that that's probably uh, most of our questions for now. Uh, that's okay. Um, uh, Jiko's 
she says, let me see, going off topic, Sharon, sorry, but I have you heard or tried cake oil, and if so, what are your thoughts? No, I haven't, so unfortunately, I have no thoughts about it, sorry. Uh, I just kind of sort of stick with what works with me. So I think that's uh, that's it as far as questions for skincare or yeah, no, suntan skincare, same thing. So now we are going to jump into even skin tone. Now, uh, I want to talk about the most important aspect of your overall look from natural to red carpet is even skin tone. Uh, and even skin tone, what happens to us, not only as we age, but when, but it shows up a bit more when we're aged, is that um, our, around our nose, the sides of our mouth, and the inside part of our eye here uh, doesn't get enough. Uh, coverage. And when it's covered, it makes a big difference. Now, there's a, all kinds of myths about powder just shows up your wrinkles more uh, than other makeup. Um, I'm going to, wait till you see the demonstration I have for you, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that myth. Any moisture in, uh, I, because I, see, I recommend the dual finish powders. My number one choice is by Audrey Morris, sold under Burrell. It's one company that I know of. The other is the Max Studio Fix, and it's a pretty darn good product, but I like it because it's worldwide and it's easily accessible for most people. And I don't use primers and all that sort of stuff. All I do is moisturize beforehand, about two to five minutes beforehand, and a moisturizer, not a serum, not your oils, none of that stuff, because no matter what makeup you use, if you're putting that stuff on your face in the morning, it's going to make the makeup slide off. So just a moisturizer. And in humid and hot weather, for our, our sisters in places like California, uh, uh, Texas, uh, Florida, uh, in parts of, of North Africa or the Middle East, uh, and some of our, 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 our femme fatales in Australia, you know, we have a lot of humid weather. The Dual Finish Powder Foundation works so much better in humid weather. Why? Because it, it kind of absorbs the the moisture and it gives the skin a glow whereas liquids and creams it's like mixing oil and water they melt and it shows so um i'm uh and one of the things that I, i'm going to show you in this video too is uh the use of a of a dome brush you know there's a i did a video on this a little while ago about how to Take a, you know, kind of a round brush and tighten it up so you've got a, a nice, dense dome brush to work with. So I think uh, what we'll do, what I will do now is, oh, I didn't want to get rid of that one. Okay, I'm going to put up this video and you're going to see uh, when we have a close up. Now, if I can grab this, take a look at the discoloration I have uh, around the eyes uh, and, and in the trenches, and I've got a few spots starting to happen to my face. Just, you know, those sunspots that we just talked about? Okay, so I'm showing also where my one eye has dropped down and how that makes that eye look a little smaller now and how the lips on the that side of my face are thinner, so I have to adjust when I'm applying my makeup. So now we're going to look at the different tools. And this is the Burrell, the number 31 and 30 for highlight and 35 for contour. And I mix the pink and the orange. Now, the brushes here, there's I use two for foundation. Um, the one on the, it's on the, it's the one without the rubber band. It's more of a flat dome brush and I use that and then I use the dome brush as, as the final push-in. One spreads and one pushes in. 
Then I apply with my regular sponge, and there's a kabuki brush for the um, for the uh, contour under my chin and the sides of my nose. And then I use this fine detail brush for uh, anything that I may have missed and just to go in. So the first thing that I do is I put on a layer all over of the dual finish powder. And I don't make a big deal so much of it around my eyes. I just kind of slap it on a bit. I, I don't get very detailed about it because that comes in the next step. Now, I must tell you that I did this, uh, I checked, and it takes about less, well, just over three minutes. But this was teaching. So, you know, that's pretty good. That's not a lot of work. Now, I make sure that I, uh, that I just spread it on. Just spread it on wherever it needs it, paying especially particular attention around the nose, the chin, the upper lip, and the sides of the mouth, uh, and especially along the sides of the nose and any other places. So there's the first layer, and then I take my the flat brush, and I go in and I use the highlighter, which is a shade or two lighter, and I go over my eyes and I mix it with the foundation color and I just sweep around the eyes and give it a good, good, good coverage. And I especially make sure to get to the underside of the, of, or the side of the, whoop, I'm gonna, I can't back it up. Anyway, make sure to get to the, to, to the, along the, the edge of the lash line because often as we age that tends to discolor and turn maybe a bit of a, a you know a red or a pink color too okay and so now I'm doing the same with the second eye and just packing it on there now I'm not hurting myself believe me it may look that way I thought about that afterwards but it's just that I'm so used to it I know what I'm doing here so it, it doesn't hurt me at all and then I I dip it in to the um, solely into the highlight and I go around the the into the corners of the eyes and around the trench um, also covering up so you see the trench of my particular eye and do you see where I'm going into the court and see how I'm sort of pushing it in and then I'm going into the trench because that's where the shadow is on me with my particular eye shape into the corner push it in and around into the trench I don't go into the eye skin above that but I also go down the triangles un underneath the eyes and with what's left on the brush just put a little bit on the, my nose now I'm taking that dome brush going in and really pushing the product in you can see the difference that that makes and I'm uh, mixing it a little bit with the um, with the foundation sometimes I mix it sometimes I don't it just depends but do you see how pushing that in and then I just the regular foundation I push it in around the nose and around the sides of the mouth why because this is the area where our face gets the most wear and tear and it shows up the most and then if you've got any little spots you can push it in with your dome brush there too so then if I've missed any little thing I go with the fine detailed brush and I just you know catch anything that I've missed I I noticed I missed a little bit on that right eye. Then I go in with the brush and I do my decollete so that my neck, my face, and my decollete are all the even colored. Then I use the kabuki brush and do my chinny chin chins with the contour uh, just going down and sweeping out and going towards the back of the ear. And a little bit on the sides of the nose seems to work for most women at this stage because our noses do get bigger. Then I'm using that little brush, mixing the pink and the uh, uh, orange together. And notice how I'm going in kind of a C shape around the eye. Now this looks a little bit heavy, uh, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go over with a, uh, uh, a shimmer, not a glimmer or anything. It's just a sheen to the eye, just a sheen. That's all you want. So I'm going over uh, the, the uh, what do you call these things? your cheeks, the highlight, the bone right there. So then I'm going to show you what I do for a, um, 
a spot with the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Now, I was trying to decide between that and the HD Forever, and I kept testing them both, and I decided to go with the MAC. I liked the old formulation of the Makeup Forever, but they've changed it, so MAC it is. So I'm taking out a little dome brush, dipping in just a wee bit, and tapping it on to that little spot that I have uh, at the bottom there uh, under my chin. So I'm just going to tap it in and then I'm going to use my finger just to just kind of spread it and press it in a little bit. And then I'm going to add more of the powder with the sponge and I'm not going to drag and drop, I'm going to press. Press it in. Now here's the thing with concealers. If you put it on the bare skin, most likely your skin's got a little bit of oil or moisturizer or whatever, so there's going to be a bit of a tendency for it to kind of slip off. Whereas if you put your makeup on first, your powder foundation first, then, only then, if you need, and only if you need, spot conceal where you need it, you know, let it, and with the MAC, it, get, put it on and, 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 and it will set. And then add powder over top, like I said, press in and out. Don't drag. Because if you drag it on, you drag it off. So just press and that should seal it for the day. So I think, yes, so there it is, the full face. Big difference from from the uh, the beginning uh, of the of the the look. And you yes, my eyes look like two pee holes in a snowbank, but that's when the makeup comes in. That makeup right there is exactly, well, let's go to the end, is exactly what I've got on today. So re let me remove my glasses and see if I can get down here and, you know, that's that finished foundation is exactly what I'm wearing. Now, the coloring is different. I realize that because this is a video, this is live. But trust me, there's nothing different that I did except I added my lipstick, strengthened my lash line, uh, you know, did the things I needed to do and gave myself some brows and I lifted the one. That's the same. Now, do you see wrinkles? Absolutely. But take a real close look at the before picture here. You can see my pores more in the before than you can in the after. And I didn't use any primer. None, excuse me, whatsoever. So, I think that that speaks, that speaks volumes right there. Uh, and, and again, when you use this product and really concentrate on around, see the around the corner of my eyes, not only do I have dark eyes to begin with on the lid and underneath, in the very corners, I have a, a, a bluing. And I used to have it, excuse me, just on one side, but now I have it on both. Part of aging. So, um, you know, and of course, you know, we talked about lips a few weeks ago. Look at the difference in my lips that I'm talking through right now, as compared with my lips in the before picture. Let me get down here a little bit. Do you see how I've adjusted them? And because I've used the light color, this is actually number 25, the, the red I love for summer, and the 150. But do you see how I didn't bring the 150 right to the roll? It's just in the center. But it gives it a 3D look, and it's darker in the corners. That's the same lip that's in the before picture. And as far as that blush is, it looked too, it looked maybe a little, you know, you may have thought it was too heavy on the after picture, of course, because there was no other makeup. But with the full enchilada going on, it blends in and it works just great. At least it does in my opinion. So I hope that that was helpful. So let's check our questions, shall we? Uh, Jekyll says, uh, my makeup looks beautiful today. I always look very classy and polished. Mwah. Thank you. That's very kind of you. 
Uh, okay, Joan, let's see what she has to say. Amazing how the different techniques make the most dramatic, wonderful changes. Yes, it's in the technique. It's not in buy this lotion, buy this potion. Oh, no, maybe it's this product. No, no, it's like it's like with lipstick. You buy a lipstick, you think it looks beautiful because it looks beautiful in the in the in the case, right? Uh, uh, in the um where you're buying it. It just looks stunning compared to all the other colors because they're marketing, they're smart, they know what they're doing. However, when you wear it, when you get home, you think, wait a minute, it doesn't look so good. You know, it, it, it it's promises, promises, myths, uh, you know, uh, magic. And it's, 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 it's not. Okay, uh, uh, let's see. Let me see what we have here. Jeanne says, pure and bare metal rolls look terrible on me, but I dare to try the Burrell and love it. Wonderful. Yes, uh, bare minerals, um, it can, it can look, it can look okay, but bare minerals requires a lot of touch-ups. It really does. At least that was my experience with it. So let's see what else. Uh, Donna Dawson, you look fabulous and love your hair. Well, thank you, Donna. That's very kind. Um, let me see. Uh, Kathy Verner says, love this, Sharon. It's so helpful to see how to actually apply everything. Well, that's good. I, I uh, was hoping, uh, technically, that I could just play the video for you where I'm talking in it. But, you know, technical hell. Uh uh, raised its raised its head, and uh, I just had to do a workaround. So I hope that this helped. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take the video and make a tiny little video out of it by itself, so it's something that's easily referred to. Um, let me see. No, it's not. Oh, thank you, uh, Diane. Velenuve asked if that was a damp sponge. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't. But thank you for bringing that up, Diane, because I know a person, I don't know if she's watching now, Cindy Pearson. She dampens her sponge every time she puts this on. And she said she just loves it. What happens is when you dampen your sponge and you apply it, it gives that extra coverage that's needed. So... Sometimes what I'll do if I have a spot somewhere, I will damp dampen my sponge or I will dampen uh, a brush, put it into the product, and and I'm talking about like a, a, a brush that would you would lay flat. And then I just put it, press it on. I don't drag it. I just press it on and, when it, and let it dry and it, and it works great. Um, but I don't need to use a damp sponger. I don't need any extra coverage, really. But I got the stuff in my arsenal in case I ever do, or when I do, because let's not let's be serious. I do from time to time. Uh, uh, okay, you're getting a storm soon. Ah, <laughs> okay, Joan. I keep well batting down the hatches, as they say. Um, let me see what. Um, what Jan has to say, I was amazed at the difference with putting the Burrell on my upper lids. I didn't realize they were so dark. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, we do have, uh, you know, uh, many of us, as you can see. Let me see if I have just the picture of that. Um, I do. yippee ki -yo ki -yay. I'm smarter than I, well, let's not go get carried away here, Sharon. Um, I, uh, you can see in my before, both, I mean, I look like I have an eyeshadow on. My eyes are, are that, you know, dope, dope. Yeah, well, dopey too, yeah. A, a kind of a taupe uh, and brown color, actually, you know. Um, but in the after picture, covering all that up, it, it, it reduces or appears to reduce the size of my eyes. Now, here's something that's really interesting. You know how light brings forward and dark moves back? And uh, sometimes that's just not true. This is a wonderful example of how the light makes my eyes look smaller. The dark makes my eyes look bigger. Isn't that interesting? And that's where when you're wearing a, like a dark a shadows and that sort of thing around your eyes, um, it helps to make them look stronger. 
So, and, and uh, you know, so it just shows you that there, there's some good rules, you know, there, you know the, the rule of light, it, you know, inflates and dark diminishes is absolutely true. However, there are times when those rules are, you know, are, are stretched, so to speak. Um, yes, you look, uh, Jan said she looked mummified. <laughs> After, after she applied it. Yes, that's true. But if you can get used to that, know that that's just phase one of the beauty that's coming out of you. It's just phase one. That is all. Uh, could I please mention what kind of moisturizer I use by Lynn Clemens? Um, I use Total, what is it? Total Effects Olay, I think it is. That's all I use. And I, on gym days, because I have a, you know, my bag packed a certain way, I use the Aveeno with a, an SPF in it because I have to go across the street to the gym. And if the sun sees me, I'm protected. <laughs> so, um, and, and at night I use, uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll get to that. There's an answer for that in the questions below. Uh Oh, it was the other pr uh, product that Jan had that problem with. Yes. Okay. Fine. <laughs> so, uh, I think that it's probably time to move on to uh, to questions. And uh, oh, and one of the things that I wanted to tell you was from our friend Joanne uh, Chandler, in removing this uh, Maybelline Superstay twenty four hour. Some people find it hard, and we've suggested using a, um, uh, uh, I'll get to your, your, your uh, I'm going to put you up here, Diane. I'm going to just put you up and put you to the side for a little bit so that I can answer that for you. Um, those of us who have um, ha have trouble getting off the, uh, the, the lip color, use uh, coconut oil or olive oil or anything else. Joanne Chandler came up with a brilliant idea. Use Vaseline. Because it does, and I tried it, it does, it removes it, but the bonus is you get a, 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 a bit of the Vaseline residue left over, which is perfect as a night um, moisturizer for your lips, for those that have dry lips. So give that a try. Thank you so much, Joanne. Uh, great, great tip. Now, Diane Villeneuve asked, a foundation color for a lot of redness in the skin. Thank you. I'm sorry that I um, I, I, I uh, ignored that before. You can see the brownness that I had on my face, right? Brown or red, it doesn't matter. I ha I, it, go with your skin color. Don't think about... Uh, the rosacea that people may have or things of that nature. Check out a, a video that I did for Marcella on her exanthalasma and I'll, I'll post it um, as a reference where she had not only white spots on her eyes, there were, she was also quite red around the eyes. And the only thing I used on her was the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. Now, she wasn't used to wearing makeup, had never worn it. So there was no point in me, you know, getting a whole bunch of things for her to layer and all that sort of stuff like we would do if, you know, we were doing special effects or something in, in, a, in a makeup studio. This is everyday life. This woman was, you know, needs to, to uh, have something that she can work with that she's not used to. And I have to tell you, take a look at the before and after picture of her uh, because it, it worked just great. Don't get caught up in the discoloration. Match your, you want to match, usually what you want to match is around your, your, your um, jaw area and into your neck. Now, if you've got a face that's a lot lighter, or a lot darker. You have to see which is the most dominant color between your neck decollete and your face. Okay? And then you you have to you have to kind of figure out, okay, so am I gonna go, even though my face is really light, but my neck and my decollete are dark, so maybe I'm gonna go with a little bit darker to blend in, or maybe I'm going to use a dark my contour color around the 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 from here around to here and, and blend it lightly upwards so that it blends nicely, okay? Don't, don't get caught up in, um, you know, wearing green to cancel red. Yeah, 
theoretically. But how much time are you willing to spend in the morning getting yourself out the door and looking great fast and easy? I'll tell you one thing, I'm not prepared to do that. And I've got all that stuff here. I, there's no way I would do that. So I, I hope that answers your question okay. Now we have a, uh, let me see, a question here from uh, last time. Uh, Misty, can you help me uh, when I wear the Maybelline 24 hour, it dries down and shows every crack in my lips. What can I do to help lessen the wrinkles or lines or the appearance? Not sure I totally understand Misty, but my recommendation would be, A, if you've got dry lips, put Vaseline on them every night. While you're at it, cover your cuticles too, so that you'll always have soft, supple cuticles. Cheap and cheerful, and it works. Number two, um, I don't know how you're applying it, but my recommendation is make sure that your wand isn't loaded with with lip color. Okay, scrape it off back into the container. Don't 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 overload your brush or your wand, and apply a thin layer, and see how that looks. And then of course there's a whole, whole bunch of ways of doing this. You can put another layer on. Or you can put another layer on just the, just in the corners and then add just a highlighter in the center. Uh, there's all that sort of thing. And if you're talking about correcting your lips where there's lines, now I'm going to come up close here. See? My lines? I had them. But when I smile, you don't see them. When you apply your lipstick, um, just spread slightly. Don't go overboard, like don't, you know, you don't want that, just slightly, like that. And that should help you to get a nice smooth line. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. Um, and also, some people who have lips that are, you know how they come out just a little bit? They have a little bit more of the inside of their lips showing. Make sure that that's dried off. Make sure your lips are dry and free from any oil, moisturizer, sunblock, anything. The product only works on clean, dry lips. And if you apply with a thin layer, then you'll find that it will dry quicker and work better for you. Let us know how that works for you, okay, uh, Misty? Um, all right, let's see. So our next question is from Val. Uh, Mary looked gorgeous. Uh, Sharon, did Mary have liner on her lower lash line? For those of you who remember, I did the Mary, uh, our model Mary, who is 80 now and published her first book. I did a, a, a video on her makeup refreshed look for 80, at makeup and hair. Mary has glaucoma, and so she uh, has to apply a product along her lash line uh, prescribed by her doctor. Now, interestingly, this is what Latisse and other um, eyelash uh, companies are, uh, are about. They've somehow formulated or reformulated or whatever the, what people are using for glaucoma. So um, that's all that it is. Uh, I know her eyes look very dark there. <laughs> I tried to even cover them up a little bit because they're quite strong. I mean, she's got very strong lashes, which is, you know, her upper lashes are just amazing. Anyway, I hope that answers your question, Val. Okay, so whoops, I wanted to take that off. And okay, this question from, question from Sue Silva. What retinol products do you use? Well, I have an answer to that. Um, I use retinol one night and AHA the next. The retinol I use is the Neutrogena Rapid Tone Repair. And then the next night I use Reversa Anti-Spot uh, Night, which is an AHA. So that's, that's just what I use. So I hope that that helps. Um, and let me see. Oops. So I think that's that's it for the questions. Now let's see what we have here. Um, Sue Silva, uh, how 
how did you know what color foundation to buy, I think is what she meant. Again, I think I've explained that in checking your, 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 your coloring at your jawline. Okay, uh, good question here um, from uh, Neely. What is the best way to choose a lip color without having to buy numerous colors to try uh, that end up not being used? A really good question. My recommendations are that people only need about six colors at the most. You want a warm and a cool, a true red, and you want a highlighter and a and a in, in both warm and cool. Um, colors that I recommend that I think work well for most people in the Maple Leaf Superstay line are. 115, which is a berry color, and I think that's what I used uh, in the in the lip um, video that I did a couple of live streams ago. Um, also, so that's 115. What I'm wearing today is number 25. It's a it's a red that I can make darker red, or I can lighten it up simply by using a warm highlighter, number 150. A cool highlighter would be 115 or 110 pearly pink. Now, both these highlighters can be worn on their own as is. They're fine, but there's a little bit of shimmer in them. So you, if you have to uh, augment or correct your lip, you don't want to wear those necessarily over the roll of your lip because it will catch the light and you'll see the roll and the gigs up, okay? Uh, and Jen just uh, reminded me that uh, if you go on the Facebook uh, GGLI page, Going Gray and Loving It, or on my other beauty page, I have a list of the products uh, that, that I like and the colors that I, that I would recommend that are good for most people and links to those things. So if you go on either one of those Facebook pages and in the description box below, I also um, put whatever I'm wearing uh, in that video, plus the standard colors that I recommend for most people. So I hope that answers your question. Let me see if we have any other questions here. Um, I'm not sure what Jen is saying here, so let's pull it up and see. In other brands, I need the lightest uh, or the next to it. So when I went with that, plus Sharon looks fair like me, so I used what she did. Uh, okay, I'm not sure I totally understand that, Jen, but, um, but thanks. Okay, let's see. Are there any other questions from anyone here? Doesn't doesn't look like it. It looks like we're uh, uh, we're out of questions, and I think we've got the answers. I hope that that worked for you. Um, now um, remember that that there's more answers to more questions on the YouTube page. You can use the search bar as shown here, and uh, or the playlists, uh, which is everything is broken down, and you just click on the playlist you want, and everything will be uh, will be played within that category that you're looking for. Uh, so um, I want to show you that all the links um, are in the info box or the description box below the video. So everything that you're, you're, you're looking for should be there. And again, I really appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe uh, to this because, again, I'm not monetized. I don't make any money or get any benefit in any way, shape, or form. This is my sole purpose is to share and to help us grow with our, our hair and our age in a way where we have healthy self-confidence leading the way. And for those that want a um, of our popular uh, uh, Pay It Forward Make Better, you can join us on Going Gray and Loving It, or I am also starting to do it now on my other beauty page. So, uh, you know, th those things are all available there. Now, this week's quote Makeup is not a cure for psychological problems, but makeup is a tool 
that improves the psyche. It actually does. Now, let me see. I think I may have a, a no, I don't. That's great. So thank you very much, ladies. I hope that this was uh, helpful to you. And um, stay tuned next week. I'm going to have a video on... I can't remember, but I know it's good. <laughs> I think you'll like it. Anyway, thank you so much. Mwah! We will see you uh, either on the Facebook pages or back here.